Hey guys, James Sane here. So today we're going to talk about the mitral valve area calculation using the Gorlin formula, and then also some of the various formulas that you could face when you take your registry exam, or the formulas that you're certainly going to have to know if you're in a cardiovascular technician program. And so a little bit about me, my name's uh, James Sane. I've been a nurse for 30 plus years, a whole lot of years in ICE, various ICUs, a whole lot of years in various uh, cath labs, uh, some years in the industry. And I've also been teaching for the past nine or 10 years at Polk State College in uh, here in Central Florida. I teach in the CVT program. I teach pharmacology and I teach, um, it's called CVT2, but it's basically hemodynamics. And so let's take a look at some of these formulas and some of the information. Okay, so for the mitral valve for the Gorlin formula, here is the formula that you can use. And there's there's two different formulas. So you can either use, this is the one that I find easiest to remember, uh, cardiac output divided by heart rate times the diastolic filling period times a constant of 37.9 times the square root of the mean gradient. Okay, so a couple of things. The cardiac output has to be in milliliters. So if you have like a five, you have to multiply it by a thousand or 6.2, you have to multiply it by a thousand, 6,200 cc's or 5,000 cc's uh, divided by the heart rate. And then, you know, the, your recording system will give you the heart rate. Uh, you need an accurate heart rate. It, it can. If you have somebody that's unstable, has a, uh, a runs of SVT, somebody's having variable heart rate, it will make a difference in your valve area. And your diastolic filling period will be given to you by the computer. Uh, if it's in milliseconds, you have to divide by a thousand and put it into seconds. Now your constant, depending on your computer system, may use 37.9 or 38, pretty much the same thing. And it's the square root of the mean gradient and your recording system will give you the mean gradient. Okay. And then just as in the aortic valve area, you, if you, if you want to do it, if you, you can think of it this way too, you can think of it as the flow across the valve divided by the constant times the square root of the mean gradient. And so the flow across the valve would be cardiac output divided by diastolic filling period times heart rate divided by 37.9 times the square root of the mean gradient. In my opinion, it's just, just the way my brain works. I think this formula, cardiac output divided by all those things is easier, easier for me to remember, but to show you that they're the same, no matter how you do it. So here's an example of a cardiac output of five and a half liters. We have a DFP of 0.69, a heart rate of 61, a mean gradient of 15. So five, if we're going to go down this side of the equation uh, on the left side of your screen. So we have 5.5 times a thousand or 5,500 cc's divided by the heart rate is 61. The DFP is 0.69, the constant 37.9. And then the square root of the mean gradient is 3.87. So 61 times 0.69 times the constant times 3.87 gives 6173, so 5500 divided by 6173 gives a mitral valve area of 0.89. Now, if you want to do a flow divided by the uh, variables, then it's the same, we have the same um, data to start with. So our flow, our cardiac output of 5.5 times 1,000 or 5500 divided by the diastolic filling period times heart rate. DFP is 0.69, and I really should have a zero in front of that. You always need a zero in front of your decimal. So I could look at that and think it's 69. So 0 0.69 times the heart rate is 61. So 5,500 divided by 42.09 gives uh, 130.6, or might as well call it 131. Now we plug in the bottom numbers of the constant times the square root of the mean gradient, 15, and the square root is 3.87. So we get 131 divided by 147. That gives a mitral valve area of 0 0.89. So that's how you do the, uh, the mitral valve calculation for the Gorlin formula. It's very similar to the aortic valve. You're just using uh, diastolic filling period instead of systolic ejection period. And your constant 
is a different. All right, so that's the mitral valve area, the Gorlin formula for calculation of the mitral valve area. Now let's take a look at some of the formulas that you could uh, be questioned about when you take your registry exam, or certainly if you're in a CVT program. So here, all right, so here's uh, a cheat sheet. This is just a made up cheat sheet of the formulas that James Sane made up. And of course, then it come from my brain. They came from various uh, textbooks and resources. Um, mainly Ragosta, uh, Morton J. Kern, and Wes Todd is where I got all these. So they're not made up from my brain. They're, they're just, I compiled them to help me remember them. So here's the informational shunt calculation. And whether you, what you're looking for when you expect when you draw blood from the atria, what you expect when you draw blood from the ventricle, um, the collection sites for when you draw your blood, uh, how to do the flam equation, uh, and then how to calculate pulmonary blood flow, how to ca calculate systemic blood flow, and then the, calculate the shunt flow. And then really the one that I've always used is simplified formula for shunt calculation. Uh, it wasn't on the registry the two times that I have taken it, but it could be. And then for valve area, here's mitral valve area, whether you want to do flow or whether you want to do um, the way that I prefer, cardiac output divided by everything, well, what we just went over. Uh, and then the Gorlin formula for aortic valve, again, flow divided by some of the constants or cardiac output divided by all the variables. And then the Hackey or Hakai uh, formula for the shortcut for calculating valve area, um, where it uses cardiac output in liters. So, the difference here is that this in Hackey, it's liter, cardiac outputs in liters, and you're dividing by the square root of the peak to peak. Whereas in the other formulas, you're using cardiac output in milliliters, and you're using the square root of the mean gradient. Um, calculations for mean arterial pressure, the systolic pressure plus two, two times the diastolic pressure divided by three. Uh, SVR. Um, whether you want it in woods or dines, so you always calculate your number and that's your woods. And if you multiply it by 80, that's what you get in dines. And the same way for the uh, pulmonary vascular resistance, the formula here, as well as normals. And then O2 consumption. Um, there's a number of different formulas for O2 consumption. These are uh, three of the common ones, 125 times BSA. Uh, 110 times the uh, BSA for elderly people, then that begs the question, you know, what's elder elderly? Or your O2 consumption give me three milliliters times the patient's weight in kilogram. If you have to calculate BSA, you could look it up on a table and get, you know, close, uh, a more accurate way is the take the height in centimeters times the weight in kilograms divided by 3600 and take the square root of that number and it gives you the patient's BSA. Formula for AV difference, uh, just uh, then talking about forward cardiac output versus angiographic cardiac output, stroke volume, forward stroke volume, angiographic stroke volume. Uh, the formula for FIC, cardiac output, I certainly think you need to know that. O2 consumption uh, divided by the uh, AO percent sat to PA percent sat times 1.36 times hemoglobin times 10. Now, the thing with the FIC uh, cardiac output, your O2 consumption, it's always going to be ballpark 225, 250, 210, somewhere in that number. Um, sometimes in a test question, it will tell you the O2 consumption is 125 is the constant. And you have to know you take the constant multiplied by the BSA. Um, and then also on the AO sat and the PA sat, it's not like just say, for example, your sats were 98 and 75. It's not 98 minus 75, it's 0.98 minus 0.75. So you have to put it in the, in the decimal uh, form. Um, and you can remember it, you know, uh, times 1.36 times hemoglobin times 10 or 1.36 times 10 is always going to be 13.6. So you could remember AO sat minus PA sat um, times 13.6 times hemoglobin. Um, and the only sat that you should use, so so for for the AO or for arterial saturation, your arterial blood, 
Your arterial blood saturation should be the same throughout your body, whether you draw from a radial, whether you draw from a femoral, whether you draw from uh, the AO. Um, they may not be different in the heart if you have a shunt, um, like if you draw on uh, left atrial uh, blood. But once you get out of the heart, all your arterial uh, oxygen saturation should be the same, whether it's radial, femoral, AO. So you can use any of those for your arterial saturation. Your PA sat or your mixed venous sat should be from your PA. Okay, and not a wedge. So your well, oxygenated blood ballpark is going to be around 95, 90 to 100, 95%. Venous blood, mixed venous and venous blood is going to be around 65 to 75. Um, and so one way that you differentiate between a mixed venous, a PA versus a wedge, sometimes you may be saying, do we truly have wedge? Well, when you have the balloon bl blown up and you draw back blood, your sat should be equal to whatever your arterial, just say the patient's uh, uh, oxygen, their AO sat is 95. Well, when you draw your PA, well, I mean, when you draw your wedge with the balloon inflated, it should be 95. Um, so that's one way that you differentiate, is this truly a wedge? Because sometimes it's really hard to get, especially if somebody has pulmonary hypertension. Um, so the only, in this fit cardiac output, the only um, PA sat or the only mixed venous sat should be your PA, not a wedge, your PA. Okay, then continuing on, cardiac output, just the various definitions of cardiac stroke volume times heart rate, also called left ventricular minute flow. Um, your fit cardiac, fit cardiac output and your TD, that's considered your, your, um, your, your forward uh, cardiac output as opposed to your angiographic cardiac output. Um, and then just some breakdown on stroke volume, cardiac index, uh, how to calculate eject ejection fraction. And then uh, some information on regurgitant fraction. So, um, and I maybe do a separate slide on regurgitant fraction to help people understand that a little better. Matter of fact, I think I will because sometimes people have trouble grasping it, but there's a regurgitant fraction, uh, whether you want to use cardiac output to calculate regurgitant fraction or whether you're using stroke volume to calculate regurgitant fraction. And look, look for another video to break that down a little more. Okay, and so how do you remember these formulas? Well, uh, uh, a lot of it's just practicing and repetition, working out the formulas, um, but also you just have to, how, however it is you commit it to memory, and I'll just show you one way that helped me before I took the registry. Um, I made out a cheat sheet. First, I tried to do it all, just just take out a blank piece of paper and write it down from my mind. So that's kind of hard at first when you first start doing it. So I made like a cheat sheet to help myself that I would do. I basically, I did it like five or six days a week. I would write these formulas down for about a month before I took the registry. I would write, write I promise you, <laughs> I did it every day. Sometimes I did it more than once a day. It's a lot of formulas to remember. So here is the cheat sheet that I just made up um, for like example, O2 consumption equals something times BSA, something times BSA, something times kilograms. And then what's the formula for BSA? It's the square root of something, fit cardiac, fit cardiac output is something divided by all this. And as you go on down the line, Gorlin um, aortic valve area, something divided by these things or, I, and I really didn't remember it that way. I didn't try to remember it that way. Mitral valve area is something divided by all this. And so I would just make copies. I would, you know, save one copy of this form and then I would just make copies and then I would like fill in. So I would go fill in, oh, O2 consumption is 125 times BSA or 110 or three milliliters per kilogram. And I would just fill in the various, uh, so BSA centimeters times kilogram divided by 3,600, the square root of that. Um, as I said, I didn't do flow. I didn't commit that one to memory. I could, could be on your registry. I'm not saying that you don't have to know it. It's just, I didn't. I just remember um, aortic valve and mitral valve area. This is the formula I remember cardiac output divided by. And so I would fill in the heart rate, the systolic ejection period, um, the um, the constant, and that this is the square root of the mean gradient. 
And uh, then the other formulas I would write down, the shortcut uh, the, for the valve area, the hacky, formula for MAP, SVR, PVR, and regurgitant fraction. And then I would just have this blank piece of paper and then I would fill in cardiac output, hacky's cardiac output in liters divided by the square root of the peak to peak. The formula for MAP, formula for SVR, formula for PVR, regurgitant fraction. I have a tendency to remember the cardiac output, which you could get asked. It's the same concept, angiographic cardiac output minus your forward cardiac output divided by angiographic. Um, so that was just the way that I uh, practiced to remember the formulas. And hopefully this may be a, a, um, a learning tool for you. Uh, feel free to use it. Feel free to share with anybody. Feel free to do your own thing. Um, so that's how you do the Gorlin, uh, the mitral valve area calculation. And then those are some of the formulas that are possibly what you're going to face on your registry. If you're in a CVT program, you're guaranteed to get all of these formulas at some point uh, in your CVT program, which cardiovascular technician, I'm assuming if you're watching it, but if you're not a CVT student, CVT is cardiovascular technician. And then people go on to sit for the registry. The registered cardiovascular invasive specialist is the uh, title. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an RN by training, um, but I'm very proud. I'm very proud of my RCIS. Um, so hopefully this helps. All right, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. It would, it would help my channel. And if you found the information useful or helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, remember to turn on notifications so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video.